everyone, welcome back. It's Larry again. Today I'm doing a long overdue video. Now, about a while back, back in 2015, I did a, a homebrewing basics video series about uh, homebrewing with fe featuring all grain, and that was and that is still currently one of my most popular videos. Actually, I think, I think maybe my, my most popular video on my channel. And I make a reference to uh, my brewing spreadsheet that I also put a link to in that video in the video des description. But I actually had intended to follow up those videos with a uh, recipe formulation video using my spreadsheet to show you how to use it and I never got around to doing it so I apologize but now here it is I finally got around to doing it so please watch this and follow along and I uh, hope I can answer all your questions in this video all right so I opened up my brewing recipe template spreadsheet here that you can download from my all grain video uh, the video description or even at the video description at the bottom of this video so what you're looking at here uh, on the first tab this is your recipe sheet or your brew log as well and what this is is basically a summary of, 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 of your recipe based upon inputs that you input into other tabs in the spreadsheet so there's a brew house setup tab a grain bill calx tab a mash calx tab and a hop calx tab information that you add into there will appear in these blue or blue gray or, or, or bluish fields and are automatically entered for you and you should not be changing anything that's 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 blue okay anything that's yellow is a manual field that you enter in yourself so anything that has yellow you enter information into anything blue leave alone okay so so what this is here is just starting from the upper left is just your own personal information uh, the dates your name style of beer it's, a, it's just, just informational uses only here is a bunch of information calculated from the other spreadsheets about your batch volume, your pre-boil volume, the boil time, you know, so on and so forth, and your estimated efficiency, as well as the actually actual measured numbers for for those same quantities. Okay, and there's a estimated pre pre-boil starting gravity, estimated original gravity, based upon information in the spreadsheet. Again, when you go to measure, you you enter these these uh, values in there of what they actually were. And uh, and and also for the yellow fields, there's um, adjuncts and uh, other things that are not specific to the all green brewing process, like the yeast or other adjuncts like coriander, as well as um, manual entry fields for actually measured mash temperature and actual measured strike water temperature compared to the predicted values. Okay, so this is you know again this is your brewing log and recipe sheet so what you're seeing here in the top left here is the grain bill quantities of grains and amounts i've added in a, in a different tab as uh, as well as your hop and bill uh, hop bill and schedule as well i've entered this in on another tab showing the quantities and species and types and times for the boil to add them into the recipe and the total ibu contribution from that and down in the lower left we have mash variables which are also again filled in from another page telling you what your target mash temperature is what your target strike water temperature is your water to grain ratio and all these things and the number of drain steps and the n amount of water involved in those drain steps as well okay so so when when on brew day this should already be done you should already have the ingredients on here and you should have printed this out or at least have this open in a laptop or on a tablet um, out in your garage or in your kitchen or wherever you're doing your brewing in order to follow this recipe okay so let's move on to the brew house setup because this is going to be the first thing you do when you open up one of these uh, spreadsheets and templates and I would suggest maybe when you download my 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 template you set up these values first for yourself and your and your and your equipment and your in your environment and actually save it that as your personal template because these variables will not change very much or or, or 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 at all going forward and these will be consistent from recipe to, to recipe for you unless you decide to come back and change these and, and tweak these now again everything in yellow you change anything in blue you leave alone okay so starting at the top now the size of your mash ton well it's it's the capacity of your mash ton my seven gallon rubber made coolers seven gallon capacity right then you enter in a value for the maximum fill line that you want for your mash tun and I, I put in 95% because I don't want it to get to 100 because it will start to overflow the mash tun so I type a value at the max fill capacity is 95% of that 7 gallons right you also enter in the size of your boil kettle 
your extract efficiency. Now, the now if it's your first time ever brewing, or you have all new equipment that you've not brewed on, you won't know what this number is. But just to let you know, this can vary from 65 to 75 uh, percent typically. And so I would suggest using a value of 70 and see where it goes. Now, you then you would brew your recipe. Maybe your predictions will be off from your measured value by a few points. Not a big deal. Your beer might be a tad sweeter or a, or a tad more bitter than, than predicted, but that's not that bad. It'll still be pretty good, I bet you. So, but what happens is that you'll calculate your extract efficiency after your brew day is over, and then you'll actually know what your true extract efficiency is, and then you, for the next time or the next batch or of your beer, you can actually use that actual efficiency that was measured from from the time before. So then you go on to your your boil time, whether it be 60 minutes, 75, 90. It's, that's personal preference. I choose 75, as well as the temperature that water boils. Now in my area, water boils at 210.6 degrees because of my uh, ele elevation above sea level is about seven or 800 feet where I live. And that's, and that's what the temperature that water boils at, so I have to enter that in there. As well as the pitching temperature, self-explanatory, your, your, your target batch volume. This is an important one as well, because this is what, how, how much beer do you want in your keg or bottles? This is the final target, final batch size. Now, I say final because there's losses along the way here, right? So, for example, um, when you're doing your mashing and you're laudering, there's going to be some losses. Water is going to get absorbed into the grain and stay in there, or there'll be water down in the bottom of the mash tun that you can't get out. Not water, I mean wort. I say water, but I meant wort. Uh, as well as losses in the boil kettle, there'll be some amount of wort uh, absorbed into the hops or the sludge at, at the bottom of the kettle that you can't retrieve. There'll be losses in the fermenter. After fermentation, when you go to siphon out of the fermenter and into your kegger bottles, you're going to lose some some uh, some volume there. So uh, so you punch in your your desired final batch size. It'll calculate from your losses the required post boil volume that you need, and then if you can determine what your hourly evaporation rate is. Uh, for your equipment, you know, is it 10%, is it 12%, is it 8%? I Here I apparently have 11.5 in this spreadsheet. And that's, you're going to use that value to predict uh, times the length of the boil. And that value there added to this, it's going to give me an evaporation loss of this value here, as well as a cooling loss, which is uh, when you cool a hot liquid down from bo boiling down to room temperature, it's about 4% or so. And that's going to be a bit of loss of measured volume. So you account for that. And what you end up with is your required pre-boil volume. So to get 5.25 gallons of beer in the keg, with all these losses and this evaporation rate, I need 6.74 gallons, in this case, of, of wort before the boil starts. Okay, so set this all up. Get it going for your equipment, your mashing methods, your, you know, basically your your own personal brew house information. So go ahead and just get that done. Okay, so let's move on. Now the grain bill. Here's uh, where you enter in your grains that you're going to use. Now, before I even go down this row, you see at the top here, um, this pre-boil volume, post-boil volume, and extract efficiencies all came from other tabs in a different or cells in a different sheet, right? So so it carried the, the information forward for you, but w what you do here is in yellow again, only yellow, is that you enter in the information. So so this malt column is really just a description field for you, um, which will be mapped to your front page here as these entries here, okay? And uh, you would then come over here and enter, well, is it a grain or an extract? Well, it's a grain what the potential specific gravity per pound is. Now that information is available out there. It's a, you know, it, uh, for, so, so for example, for, for every pound of pale two row malt, I have potential specific gravity uh, that I can extract in theory of 1.037. Uh, so truth is though, it's not gonna actually be that because of our extract efficiency, it's gonna be 72% of that value, but that's that's what this stuff is all doing for you over here. So don't much worry about that. Okay. So anyway, so you so you enter in your, your grains, the type of grains, the points 
the potential points that those grains have that you can find online or from my other spreadsheet that, that I have there, uh, the amount that you plan to put on each of them. And what it does, it comes over here and it calculates all the points and gives you a total predicted starting gravity for the pre-boil as well as the post-boil. And there's two fields down below that you would come back to later once you measure these yourself and enter in the enter in the information so let's let's say I entered and I measured 1.050 for my pre-boil instead of you know 1.051 and, and some similar results here and it actually gave me a, a prediction of 71 percent so if I use 72 percent as my guess and I actually measured 71 percent well the next time I make a batch of beer I'm going to change my extract efficiency on my spreadsheet over here to 71 percent just like that okay and now it's 71% and it matches it up perfectly and, and the predicted values and the actual measure values are are one and the same okay this is great stuff but if you have uh, not so let's say there's a case here where you have a a, a grain that you're not doing grain you're going to add corn sugar whoops typo corn sugar that was a question I got uh, on the video recently, right? Well, corn sugar isn't a grain. Uh, corn sugar or or uh, or dry malt extract or li liquid malt extract is sort of is, is really considered an extract, right? And corn sugar, I think, had a potential of 1.046. Not quite sure at the moment. And let's say I put a pound in there. Well, it's going to add 7.9 post boil points, and and that's and that's and and no, but notice that the efficiency for extract is 100% not the mashing efficiency. That's because extract has already been mashed and extracted and, and what you have here is the final product. So the corn sugar is 1.06. It's 100% efficient because it's a 1.046 even after the mash is done. And actually <clears throat> it's not the best place for something like this because you're not going to mash the sugar in with the grains. You're going to add this to the boil afterwards. But for the purposes of calculating uh, your predicted original starting gravities you would enter it in here anyway okay just keep that in mind you don't need to add this to your mash I would not recommend doing it I would put it in the boil after the mash is done for your actual grains okay all right so let's so let's move on now for the mash you see my mash calcs here is an ambient grain temperature field so again everything in light yellow you enter in yourself so I you can stick a instant read thermometer into your milled grains and get their ambient temperature from deep inside the pile of grains in my so this let's assume it was 68 degrees what your desired mash temperature is for your recipe now you can choose any number you want depending on what outcome you want the lower the temperature the uh, more alcoholic but th thinner flavored the uh, the beer will be the higher the value the less alcoholic but more full-bodied uh, flavor you'll get and it's usually between about 148 and 156 degrees a lot of times I'll, I'll do 152 right in the middle as a compromise, but it's it's entirely up to you. Your water to grist ratio here now is 1.5 in my case, but let's say um, let's say that uh, I said, well, no, I want more water uh, per per pound of grain, and I enter two quarts per pound. Now, if I enter that in here and you, and you look down here, I didn't come down to this point yet, but I have a row here that says, is it less than 95% full? And it tells me pass or fail because my mash tun may not be able to hold all that water that I need to accommodate this. So this is sort of a quick check saying, hey, you're going to overflow your mash tun. That's that ratio is too high. So you can enter in, you know, 1.5 again, and it says, okay, this will fit into my mash tun. Okay, so that's just a little qu quick check for you, and it gives you uh, information that you need. It'll it'll calculate. Um, how much strike water that you need to add and at one temperature it'll also tell you things like um, how much water you're going to need to add how many steps are required and what the optimal volume per step will be so this whole spreadsheet is based upon um, the batch sparging which is and with that I wanted to have equal volumes to drain so I wanted to have like the same volume to drain for each step so what this does is tell you that uh, so in, in this case here, uh, it tells me I need to have two draining steps. And for the first draining step, to make the uh, volumes equal for each of the two steps, I would have to add, in this case, 0 0.1 quarts, which is not really that important, but sometimes it can be higher. 
and then you would drain that volume all the way down and then it tells you to add 14.1 quarts to the second draining step and I covered the draining step process in my all grain video I, I don't want to go back into rehashing that here again but but, but that's, that's that's how you would use this information okay okay all right so we covered some some quick things about the grain bill the, the mash bill well, let's go over the hops bill now the hops bill it's just like the other pages. The stuff in yellow you enter, stuff in blue you don't. And what I have here is basically um, you, you enter in the hops and the information about the hops in here. So uh, now this is, takes a little bit more explaining to do because there's some variance in here. So 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 for example, if if you like to do first word hopping, um, you would put the words capitalized F W H in here, and it and it makes them corrections over here in the calcs that's why this is here also you would enter in for each row uh, well actually you would enter first word hops and then if not the times that you add them to the boils and then at the, at the very bottom if, if there's a, a dry hop um, step in here you just enter the word dry hop in there it'll 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 not account for certain things over here okay and this other column type you would punch in well what kind of hops is it is it leaf hops pellet hops plug hops okay and and this makes a difference. See, if I change, you probably didn't see this right now, but if I go back again to like leaf, I get an IBU total of 14.19. If I change this to pellet, it went up to 15.48, change it to plug, it changed it again. And the reason why um, the the hops, the the IBUs change for the type of hops is that there's some adjustment factors to to account for for the hops. So the sort of the normal or baseline uh, adjustment factor it would just be using whole leaf hops for everything and there would be no adjustment factor whatsoever however if you're using hop pellets they can they can contribute a slightly more bitterness per ounce of hop than leaf hops do so there i fudged in a 10 percent um, upward correction value to account for that contribution of the pellets versus the the leaves and the, and the same thing for plugs if they still make plugs I, I haven't seen plugs in years and also the contribution to bitterness from the first word hopping so 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 based upon your the, the information about first word hopping the the uh, the type of hops that, that you're using it actually adjusts these values over here okay now species this is for your information only you enter this in here and it'll show up on the rusty db page just like you see here see this looks very familiar to Let's go back to the hops calculator page to all of this here, right? So you just enter the type of hops. There are, there are alpha, al the percentage of alpha acids in them that, that's on the package as well as the quantity they add. And what, what it does here is that it, then it takes the adjustment factor into account. It calculates the total uh, U uh, factor and then calculates a international bitterness unit for each contribution. So so let's say for instead of 60 minute boil for these pellets I would put in 90 watch the uh, IBUs change so they got more bitter because they've been boiled longer and the total IBUs go up okay so this is how you can use to estimate your desired IBUs so for like an IPA this is pretty good uh, value for IPA but what if you're making like a a blonde ale this is uh, this, this is going to be way too bitter so you would come back in here and and, uh, and, uh, and adjust a few things so i would say i i don't want i don't want any pellets or any hops at all except for my first short hops and my boil hops right so i can just blank these out get rid of all this information here even to clean it all up right so and the IBUs would be 27.76. Well, that's still a little high, I think, for a, a blonde ale. Well, you can fudge this stuff, right? Well, you can come over here and say, I, I only want to use a, a quarter ounce of hops, or you can say, I want to use a whole ounce of hops, but only at the 30 minute mark. So you can actually, well, that's, that's still a little high, but, but anyway, uh, you can play with all of these to get the values that you want for your recipe, okay? So once you add all the stuff in on, on the grain bill, mash, mash tabs, bill uh, tab, and hops tab, you go back to the original recipe sheet, and you notice everything here updates. And you got your new values, you got your new quantities, you got your new values here, 
and uh, and then of course here you can for your own records you can add in things like uh, whether you're putting in like a Irish moss or a world flock tablet in and when and when to add coriander because these these things are not con contributors to the all grain mashing process but they are important to the brewing process okay so so I hope that gave you a, a pretty good quick crash course on how to use this spreadsheet without me talking forever on this topic um, if there's any more questions on this please post them in the comments and I will try to answer them and if necessary I can do a follow-up uh, video or, or more um, based and focused on certain aspects of the spreadsheet but that was just my overview and I uh, hope it helped you answer some of your questions and I hope it helps you get a nice brew day in and uh, so again thanks for watching see you next time thanks for watching be sure to check out other videos on my YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe